wondering why am I wearing a pantsuit? Because here at ABC 12, we mean business, just like MSU head coach Mark D'Antonio. Jack Morris's number is officially off limits in Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know the definition of a trap game, it's the Michigan Wolverines taking on Northwestern in Evanston. And how old did you say you were? 73. She's 73. I'm 22, yet I will never be able to accomplish what Dorothy has accomplished. Wait, if you can tell my eyes are watering, there's so much steam because we are cooking today. You can tell there's just something different in the air here. I don't know if it's nerves or excitement or maybe a little bit of both because the Wayne Gretzky trophy is in the house. Ryan, the Big Ten tournament never fails to bring surprises and maybe the biggest example of that was Michigan State's Foster lawyer the freshman came off the bench and went four for five from three-point range and coach you guys are coming off a state championship run seems like every team is gunning for you guys how does your team handle the pressure Matt McQuaid was the first Spartan to go up and cut down the net but before he took one for himself he climbed up the ladder snipped off a piece and said this one is for Arns and we've talked a lot about the X's and O's on the ice but what about how the team actually got together and there's only one man to talk to about that general manager Dave Drinkle and it's worked but it's not only been through the draft trades have also been crucial you made some big ones this season bringing and Owen Tippett, Ryan McLeod. Did you know that they would make such an impact so soon? I asked Rip Hamilton if he still has the mask that he wore during the games. He said it's framed in his house, but that his son doesn't think he actually could have worn it in a game. Hamilton said his son sees it more as a Halloween costume. This is the Michigan team that fans have been waiting for. Right now, Cassius Winston and Matt McQuaid already took the floor to get some shots up because they know this isn't just your typical rivalry game. Like you said, a lot is at stake. Michigan and Michigan State are well versed in each other's games. In fact, this is going to be the third matchup in just 21 days. We have a three way tie for first place, but the real story of the day, the comeback kids. I may need to start paying taxes in Harbor Beach if the Pirates keep <laughs> playing the way that they are. We'll start at the bottom of the second. Jacoby Jones hits a ground ball up the middle. Jones is out at first, but Nico Goodrum scores for the Tigers. They're up 1-0 early. Now I'm going to show you a sequence of events that lead up to something cool, I promise. Bottom of the third, we have one runner on. Castellanos hits it to the hole, gets through to the outfield. He gets on base. And next, we're going to have two runners on, and Candelario hits the ground ball to the shortstop, but the third baseman can't hold on to it. Now bases are loaded for the Tigers setting up this. James McCann. McCann, he do it? I think he can. Send them all home. Grand slam for James McCann. His fourth home run of the season. And the Tigers go on to win the game 9-3. Matthew Stafford on the sideline for the game, but did not play. Matt Castle got the start, and we start in the first quarter. Connor Cook, the former Spartan quarterbacking for the Raiders, he throws it complete to Johnny Holton for a 41-yard gain. Holton pushed out of bounds by Glover Quinn. That sets up a Raiders field goal, and Oakland gets on the board first. Second quarter, Cook looking in the end zone, escapes the pocket, and look at this. He leans left and throws right. A zinger to Ryan Switzer for the TD. Raiders up 10 nothing. Later in the quarter, Lions in the red zone. Amir Abdullah muscles his way in for seven. He had four TDs last season, hoping to up that number up a little bit this year, but his touchdown wasn't enough last night. The Raiders had two field goals in the fourth quarter, unmatched by Detroit, and the Lions fall in their first preseason game 16-10. It was in this dugout that Connor Foley played his last collegiate season of baseball here at Northwood University. But after graduation, Connor wasn't entirely ready to give up being a team player. Instead, this is Connor's new diamond, and these are his new teammates. Meet Luke and Parker Bischel, the sons of Northwood head baseball coach Jordan Bischel and his wife Katie. Foley built a relationship with the family of four after he was offered a spot on the Northwood baseball team. They've absolutely changed my life. I mean, they, they took a kid that got cut from a school and they said, hey, well, you can 
you can play on our team. Connor was previously at SVSU studying early childhood education. After transferring Northwood, he switched to accounting, but his heart was always with the kids. And the Bishels were well aware of Connor's true love, especially when the news broke that the family of two was about to become four. Actually, the day I first met him, when he came to say hi to me, he was he was babysitting. He, was, he brought a kid with him, so I knew about it, but I didn't know quite this level of passion until I got to know him for a little while. He's like, hey, Connor, I, I'm having twins, and I know that you have experience in it, so you can either be your assistant coach or you can watch my kids. And I said, no-brainer. I said, I want to watch the kids. It's really cool. They just know they're in great hands. They're happy. They're well kept. He's not afraid to. He's not afraid to tell us if they bump ahead or have something happen. I mean, he, he's all over it. Connor hopes to one day open up a daycare center at his home. There's plenty of children out there that are that are boys, and I think that they could thrive in a daycare that is has a male in it because it's it's not out there. Foley says being the self-proclaimed Manny never feels like a job. I've always heard, if you love your job, you don't work a day in your life. So, I haven't worked a day since about last year. In Midland, Jolie Star, ABC 12 Sports. Goodrich senior Abigail Joseph has accomplished many feats while in high school. She is a four-year varsity softball player and committed to play at Michigan State. I had several other offers, but um, when the state offer came in, I was like, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> She's one of the greatest players we've ever seen come through Goodrich, and she doesn't brag about it. She doesn't act like it, and she builds up the rest of her teammates. But softball isn't Abigail's only sport. For three years, Abigail has been a part of the Goodrich powerlifting team. In 2017, Abigail broke the state bench press record twice, and in 2018, she set her eyes on a new goal, a national championship in powerlifting. And on Saturday, March 24th, Abigail had the chance to make those dreams come true. Right before she left, I said, if you lift this, you're going to be the national, uh, got chalk in my eyes already, you're going to be the national champ. It all came down to literally the last deadlift, and I got it up and she didn't. And I started, I mean, once I got it and I saw the lights, two white lights, and I started crying. I fell and I started crying. And then I got up and hugged my coach. It was I'll never forget it. Abigail took first place in the USA powerlifting competition in the varsity 72 kilo weight class. She squatted 275 pounds, benched 165 pounds, and deadlift 352 pounds. Just to show you all how strong Abigail is, I had her demonstrate and bench press me, which she did with ease. Press. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Abigail has accomplished so much during her time at Goodrich and after this softball season, she'll be ready for her next challenge. Once you're done, you're done. You know, it's over with. But then you move on to the next chapter, which is going to be even, I mean, hopefully even better. Can only get better. At Goodrich High School, Jolie Starr, ABC 12 Sports. Caitlin Shields to a bow and arrow is like a baseball player to a glove. They just go together. It would start at age 11. Um, that's just when I started loving it. And so I just shot all the time, and it just it just became a love for me. As soon as um, she was old enough, um, she pretty much had a bow in her hand and, and was practicing and following me around the woods. What started as a love turned into a full-on talent. Shield shoots in competitions all over the country as a member of the Junior Olympic Archery Development Team. At the national tournament in February, Shields finished top five in the women's freestyle round. So that's definitely all of my hard work, you know. I've, I practiced so hard. And so placing top five definitely was an accomplishment for me, and I was very proud. <laughs> and the accolades don't stop there. Last weekend, the Swan Valley senior took home first place in the state tournament, posting a perfect score of 300. She's not even near her prime yet. She's getting there. She's got a lot more years to go on this. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind she'll be probably one of the top pros if she stays hard at it um, in the next probably five years. Shield shot herself to a scholarship at the University of the Cumberlands in Kentucky, where she'll be a part of their archery team. Just to see how difficult it is to get a bullseye, I decided to give archery a shot. Oh, no. At least 
this is on the board. I came close, but to get on Caitlin's level, I may need some more practice. Reporting for ABC 12 Sports, I'm Jolie Starr.